Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson, and in this video we're going to introduce what a basis, a basis of a vector space is. Specifically, we're going to first define a basis, and after that we're going to learn how to determine if a set of vectors is a basis. We'll start with the definition. A basis is a set of linearly independent vectors that span a space. And so what we can see in this definition is that there are two key ideas or characteristics of a basis. The first is that it must span a space. Now if we can think of why this is such an important characteristic, what does it mean to span a space? It means that every vector in the space can be written as a linear combination of these vectors. So in some sense, a basis is going to allow us to build an entire space. We should be able to generate a space just taking linear combinations of this basis vector. The second important characteristic or idea in this definition is the fact that it must be linearly independent vectors. The vectors must be linearly independent. And why is this an important characteristic of this set of vectors? Well, this was important because that tells us that if we can represent a vector as a linear combination, that that linear combination will be unique. The weightings of these basis vectors will be a unique representation for the vector that we generate. There won't be any redundancy. Each of these vectors carries some important bit of information to generate the space. So when we put these two pieces together to see what a basis really is doing, it says that if I have a basis for a vector space, then I can represent every vector in that space as a un in a unique way as a linear combination of the basis vectors. Now we're going to talk a lot more about each one of those points um, later on. But for now, let's see if we can determine whether a set of vectors is a basis. So example one, here are three vectors. So I put these all together into a set of vectors. The question is, is this set a basis for R2? R2 is a vector space. And so the question is, is this set of vectors a basis? So the first question is, do they span R2. If this is a basis, they would have to span the space. So how do we know if they span the space? Well, if they span the space, then I should be able to take a linear combination of these vectors. And I should be able to get any possible B1, B2 here, any possible vector in R2. And so if I look at this, this vector equation, of course, is the same thing as a matrix equation. And to try to find a solution, to try to find an x1, x2, and x3, I would have to make an augmented matrix. Now I could augment this with b1 and b2, but really the values for b1 and b2 are arbitrary. So if I want, I can just do my row reduction on this matrix itself. And as I do that row reduction, my first step would be to take r2 minus r1, that would leave me with the matrix 0, 0, 1. And so in this form, I am already in R, R, E, F, so I have properly reduced this matrix. And as I look at this matrix, I say, can I get to any possible B1 and B2 and R2? And I can. And I see that I can because I have a pivot position in every row. Now if I have a pivot position in every row, it tells me that the transformation that's represented by matrix multiplication is onto. And onto is another way to say it, the set of vectors span R2. So yes, they span R2 because there is a pivot position, pivot position in every row of the reduced matrix. So the answer to the first question. The next question is, are they linearly independent? Now to determine whether the vectors are linearly independent, I would have to check to see if there is a pivot position in every column. So that's another practice that we've done before. So once again, I already have the RREF for this matrix. It's right here. And I can see that there is not a pivot position in every column. So in this case, no, they are not linearly independent. Since they're not linearly 
independent, this is not a basis. Now there is one thing we can learn from this, this process, however. They are not a basis because they're not linearly independent. But this row reduction will tell me which vectors I could use to form a linearly independent set. Because I ended up with a pivot position in the first and the third columns, I can take the first and third positions of my original matrix, this one and this one, and those two vectors are linearly independent. So if I wanted to form a set that was linearly independent, I could just take those two vectors. Now if these two vectors span R2, which they do, and they're linearly independent, these ones could be a basis for R2. To summarize this example, to determine whether or not a set of vectors is a basis for a space, I should take those vectors and use them as columns of a matrix and then row reduce that matrix to determine whether there is a pivot position in every row and column. Let's look at this example. This example we have two vectors and we want to see if it's a basis for R3. So at this point it would be a good time to pause the video and go through the steps to see if you can determine whether or not it's a basis. So go ahead and pause the video now. Now that you've had a chance to work through the problem, let's work through it together. My first step is to create a matrix that has these vectors as columns, and I'm going to row reduce it. In this case, my first step is to switch R2 with R3 to put my row of zeros at the bottom. My next step would be to take R2 minus R1. My first row would stay the same. My next row would become 0 and negative 1, and my last row is 0, 0. And lastly, I could take negative R2, which would give me 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. So in this case, I'm in REF. I can identify my pivot positions. I do have a pivot position in every column. Therefore, these vectors are linearly independent. I do not have a pivot position in every row. Thus, these vectors do not span the space. So they do not span R3. As I reflect on this, I can see that these will not span the space because if I look at these two vectors, there is no linear combination that could ever get me to this vector in R3 because there is no linear combination that could give me a non-zero value in that second position. So this is another way to confirm this result. If I could get this full result just by taking the matrix formed by putting these vectors in as columns and looking at the REF. So in this video, we've defined what a basis is and we've learned how to determine whether a set of vectors is a basis. And that concludes this video. Thank you.